spend a lot of time overseas, and we are blessed. If you have your Bible or your phone, 1 Corinthians 15 that he just read, thank you so much for doing it. I know that you are tired, but anointed by God, welcome to everyone here. Thank you, everyone online. Welcome, welcome, welcome in the name of who? Yes, Jesus. Woo, let's roll. So um, I want to say this, that we are two weeks away from, some people call it Easter, or we'll call it the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I praise God for y'all being here. I praise God for those people online. May God speak mightily today. I love that prayer. I love that man of God who has sacrificed so much. So I'm going to do a little bit backwards. So I would like to start with 1 Corinthians 15, verses 10 and 11. But I believe that God is moving mightily. And so our words, two words, of the year, what are they? But God. I think it's amazing that God gave us this word for everyone in the room, for everyone online, for myself, but God. Because if you're looking for the point, this is it. In verse 10, this is the point of everything that God wants us to do today. Now, this is not just a sermon. This is a worship of the King of Kings and Lord of. So you're not just sitting there. You're not just online watching there. This is a way of worship. And what does that mean? That God should empower you so much and so powerful that he's moving you. into the immediate work of Christ right now. Verse 10. But by the, but by the, hmm, y'all are good. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Now, people that are not born again say this all the time. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to live in the soul. I'm going to live in the mind, emotions, and will. I know I say it all the time. Don't worry. There's a point to it. When people live in their mind, emotions, and will, whatever their mind thinks they're going to do, whatever their will thinks they're going to do, whatever their emotions think they're going to what? But those that are born again in this room, the born again on the line, we know that the Spirit of God takes over. Takes over our, our soul. Because the Spirit of God takes over because our spirit is dead in our trespasses and sin. Ephesians 2, verse 1, there's many of them. But if you're a saint, everything changes. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. So God changes you, God changes me, God changes us for the glory of Jesus Christ, not what we want to do. Everyone in here had a plan for ourselves, did we not? But now because God moves in us, if we're dead in our trespasses of sin, we were alive. So what does that mean? That means the spirit in us was dead and all we were left with was our soul, our mind, our emotions, if we will. If you can think it, we're going to do it. If we had the emotional drive, we were going to do it. If we had the will to face it, we were going to do it. But God said, there's something greater. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Let's read. By the grace of God, I am what I was, saints. I can only be. God makes me to be. In other words, for the grace of God, it really means the Messiah. But by the, the Messiah, I am what I am. 
I'm born again. You're born again. We are born again. Everything has changed with us. I, I said there was praying, and you know you were praying it, and so you're up here playing it, but here's what I pray. Here's what happens inside of us. I, I, you know what I pray. I pray this all the time. We are born again, so that means the Spirit of God lives in our body, and then something in us and everything in us changed. So you know what I pray. Y'all know it. You see, oh, blessed are the feet that bring the gospel of what? Peace. Oh, God, you've changed me. You've taken out this brokenness, and you've made me alive in Christ. Now, I'm not perfect because if I could be perfect, there'd be no need for Jesus. No need. Oh, but God, you've taken out my heart. You've, you've taken out my heart. You've taken out my heart and made it a heart of flesh. Moldable and makeable. Oh, God, look what else you've done. Oh, you bless my mouth because out of the mouth, the heart. Oh, y'all are good. Oh, what about in the Old Testament? Speak, Lord, your servant is. Oh, yeah, then my ears change. My eyes look into the hills from whence comes my help. My help coming from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. What about my mind? What changes about my mind? And even we see how even the word of God is speaking in. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2, where the, where the mind has even changed. So then I pray, empower me, bless me, whatever you need to do, Lord, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, so that your will be done on earth as it is in, oh, y'all are good. So you're not just sitting there today. If, if all you're doing is sitting there, then let's go. I don't know, to the beach. Let's go watch a movie. Let's go eat. That's what it is, but yeah, you're sitting there because God is putting you in a safe place so that he can speak to you in a powerful way through the Holy Spirit because he's calling you today to not stay where we are. Thank you very much, Lord. He's never called us where we are. He's called us where he is. So we, we look at this scripture. If you want to know the point, by the grace of God, I or by, by, by the grace of God, here it is, by the grace of God, I am what I what? Yeah. Everything changes within us. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe there's some physical difference, but it's really the Spirit of God that's alive in you. When the Spirit of God comes alive, uh, and then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God takes over your mind, your emotions, and your, called your soul, Mind, emotions, and will called your soul, and then it affects us in our flesh. Verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me did not prove what? So we're not like demons. We're not that demons who believe and nothing changes. We're not like that. And, and so you know what Satan does to you. Y'all are smart, much smarter than me. You know it. I'm just a pinto beans and cornbread, red rice and sausage smart. That's a good word. And, and so what I mean by that is, is, is that we know that Satan comes as an angel of He's a fake phony, and so what he does, he comes like Jesus, and so he's not coming looking with red and and a, a long uh, hair pulled out in the back and dressed really bad, and and that's not, he's coming as a fake, as a phony. He comes as an angel, like so he's trying to get to your mind, emotions, and will, called your soul. Because if somebody is is already never is rejecting the Lord. Uh, you know, could care less. We are going to them because if we don't go to them and share the gospel, 
through us or God does it through, through something else or whatever else, that they are going to live eternally from God. It's all God. Of course, in the Revelation, it's the lake of fire. So you know what they're saying. I, I repeat it all the time, but you already know what you're saying. You're saying, we're in heaven, and, and, and we're in the presence of God, and we say, oh, God, you saved me from this to God be the glory. Great things he's done, right? God, you saved me this. And, and here's somebody uh, living away from God in hell, and, and they're saying, God, I traded you for this? We don't do this in vain. Yes, we sin. We're saints who occasionally sin. We're not sinners. We do sin. But God sees us through the lens of Christ. Just look it up. I'll read it again. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me is not through vain. In other words, we begin to change. We begin to do things for the Lord. But I labored even more than all of them. Yet not I, but what? But through, or but the what? Grace of God with me. But by the grace of God with me, everything changes when we know that we walk by faith and not by change how they look but not how they live they change how they look but not how they love they change how they look but they don't change because of Jesus verse 11 whether then it was I or they so we preach and so you what? Oh, the first Corinthians. Oh, the Corinthians church. Verse one. Verse one. It's, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. It doesn't say that we get to do what we want to do. We're radically changed because Christ. His power, the Holy Spirit lives within us, and we do what He wants us to do. Can I get a witness? Doesn't that change in us? I am what I am at this. Remember, God radically saved you. Now you are who you are. Day to accept who you are, who you are through Christ. Now I know that you weren't, I'm not saying that you're like be so excited about this and go, whoo! I'm not saying it's God's not saying, hey, don't run, don't live, don't get like swole. And you know, I, I like that. I said, you can't do that. As much I want to. But I can do what God's called me to do. Christ. Here we go, verse 1. 15, verse 1. I want you to see what he's saying. What does by the grace of God I am what I mean? It, 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 it really means being or who we are, like am. It changes. I exit. In other words, whatever we do, we do all for the glory of who? Yeah, and so that's that's what changes. By the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And I'm sure, I'm not saying that we don't like get better and try to learn more in academics and, and try to make more. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying, what scripture is making clear is who we are is in Christ. How beautiful is that? All the pressure is gone. We can live boldly. We can proclaim. We can live in joy.
Verse 1. Now I make known to you, brethren. Brethren is... This could be interesting. Now I make known to you, brethren. The word brethren it literally means this idea of from the same womb. That's really what it means. I have a twin sister. One of my brothers has a twin sister as well. And then I have a oldest brother. Well, think about that. Think about that. The idea from the same womb. In other words, Christ, the flesh of Christ was the actual word of God. And he is now, we, we take, think about us, everything, it's the same womb. We are, we are brothers and sisters. God has anointed us with the Holy Spirit. You are anointed. You said to John, I'm not anointed. Mm, yes, you are. You said, John, I don't do what you want. I don't do what you do. And I could turn around and say, but I don't do what you do. Could I? But either way, we're the body of Christ. Two weeks ago, I spoke about it. Now, I, I make known to you, or I know meaning declare, he's declaring this to you, brethren, the gospel. We, we know the gospel, which I proclaimed. Which I proclaimed, so powerful. It's this gospel which, uh, which I preached to you, which I also uh, you receive, in which also you stand. How powerful is that? That God is speaking to us about th those things. And let's go to verse two, because then I'm going to go back on. About which also you are saved in you if you hold fast. The word which I proclaim to you, unless, unless you believe in vain. Isn't that what demons believe? They believe in shudder. So think about what God is saying to us. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. John 17, verse 6 says, I make known to you, to them, your name. And I will continue. This is Jesus saying this. And I will continue to make it known, there it is, again, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. I may know to them your name. Think about what Jesus is saying. Everything he's saying is idea that he's made known, that he's declared that there's power in the name of Jesus because he's the name above what? Every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow. What does by the grace of God I am what I am mean? What does it mean? This idea in verse 10. I am what I am. We see this in verses 1 and 2. We see this, like, what it really means to live it out. But, but what does it mean, I am what it means? It literally means being. B-E-I, or excuse me, B-E-I-N-G. It literally means being. It literally means that, being. In other words, every place we are, every place, that, whatever we do, Everything that's happening in our life, it means that God is going to be our being to get us through, for his name to be glory. It's going to be, he's going to be our being to put us in a place of whatever job or whatever it is that he's called. Isn't it great? God is our being. By the grace of God, I am what I what? Am. That is the power of God. That is, so So let me give you an example. By the grace of God, I am what I am. I'll just use myself instead of using other people, but I 
remember when, and I told you this before, long, just, a, just a short example, is that when I was a senior in college, I was training after I got done the football season in the fall, I was training to, to maybe to, to try out in the spring for other places. And so I would train hard. I, I was 308 pounds or 300 none of your business. And uh, that was funny, that was funny. And so that's what I was doing, right? Because I'm, I'm short by, uh, by NFL standards, right? I, I'm not, I have no length. So I've gotta do something. I've gotta be athletic, I've gotta be faster, I've gotta be stronger, I've gotta be better, I've gotta dominate in whatever it is. So long story short, and I've told you this before, reminder, I was reminded by uh, a man who played in the NFL who was my agent. He was a great man of God. Love his family. And, and I remember this. I remember that he said to me one time, he said, there's an offensive line coach that likes you, but the head coach doesn't. So if the head coach doesn't, does that mean I'll get drafted? The answer is what? No. Does that mean I'll be a free agent? The answer is what? That's kind of humbling, isn't it? You know, you're, I was 21 years old trying to, to live out a dream that I had. But it wasn't a plan that God had. Does that make sense? And, and has that caused any frustration to you? It did to me. Has it ever caused frustration that why not? Why not? I got saved at 18, was it really living it out. It's, it was more like, okay, God, I'm saved. Kind of do my thing when I need you all. Ever live like that? But God wants you just like he wanted me. John, prove it. Prove it. For all of sin falls short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Is that not the words in Romans 3 and 6? How about this? From crucified with Christ begin I live, now I but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave his life for me. What about that personal aspect of that? So was I happy that I couldn't be what I wanted? But I was born for what God wanted? What do you think? Do you think at first response I was like, yeah, this is great. What do you think my first response was? I don't like what God is doing. Why? Why would I want to be that? I don't understand that. Why do you want to be what God wants you to be and not what you want to be? Where, where's the Lord? Lord, why are things a little more challenging for me than what I think I could be in a situation that it's not. Here, here's the difference. The, the difference is God knows the eternal plan. And so wherever you are, wherever you are, though we think, I, for I thought I was now going to be nothing, what God did, he become everything in my life. Why? Because I now live for him and not for me. Make sense? What, what, are, what are you going to do? People say to me, well, John, I'm not a preacher. Well, I didn't know that everything was going to be a preacher. Well, John, I'm, I'm not a, a singer. Have you heard me sing? It's not good. Well, John, I'm, I'm not, um, this, I'm making up stuff. The smartest person I know. Well, wow. When you read the Bible, what did we just read? What did Paul, who was Saul, what did he just say about himself? I'm the most wicked. I'm the worst. God, there's no way you can make me what I think you're making me. There's no way. But here's what's great about what we think is no way. God makes a way when there is no. And God is calling you today to, to walk by faith and not by what? Mm. He's calling you, said, well, John, I'm already there. there, then I might give you the phone number. What do I do to really walk in Jesus? As believers in this room, what does it look like? I mean, how am I going to do it? 
Let's go back to verse 1. Now, I make known to you. Uh, or, you know, he declares. So it's, I make known to you. But the, really, if you want to know that word in, in Greek, it's really declaring. God is declaring for you and I here, go this way. Right? God is calling everybody in this room, everybody in this room, everybody online, are, you, are we going to say yes? You say, but John, you're, you're, you know, this is kind of a, let's step out. We're, we're two weeks away from today from celebrating the resurrection, aren't we? we we're going to, Lord willing, we're going to celebrate the resurrection. I mean, what's great is, you know, summit is so great. If there's, there's food, which I said, amen. There's some candy for kids that I steal. I mean, I'm saved. I can repent. Don't judge me. So at 10 o'clock, I feel like, you know, hey, this is like good food. It's, it's got a lot of sugar in it. Right? That's the good stuff. And then the kids have fun because they're like, oh, you know, this is great. I get this and I get this. And is there a toy in it? You know, and I'm like, no, but it's candy that I'm going to eat. But what's amazing, we come in and what do we, what do we celebrate? What do we do? We celebrate the resurrection of Christ. We celebrate how God is victorious in every way by the demonstration of Christ. The very word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. This is huge. And then when we're born again, he doesn't just leave us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. And the Holy Spirit who, who made us alive, right? Through Christ, we're alive in Christ and our souls begin to change. Our mind, emotion, and wills begin to change because we want to do the thing. God's calling you. To do the will of Christ. Listen, now I make known, declare to you, brethren. Ooh, that's huge. From the same womb. That means we're, we're all born in Christ. Is that is that true? If you're born again, if you're saved, we have the same heartbeat, every one of us. Every one of us. But God doesn't, praise God, he doesn't judge me on my loves. But what he does is, is that I'm born again to so my heart that was dead in my trespasses and sin. You read that in scripture, hopefully. You were dead in your trespasses and sin. Now all of a sudden, you're, the spirit, the spirit takes over. And it says, and instead of a heart of stone, right, the idea is we get a heart of flesh, moldable and makeable in Christ. And now we become what Christ wants us to be, not what we want to be, but because of him, but we're so in love with him, we can't wait to do it. Am I right? Now I'm not saying there's not times where like, God, come on. Can I, can I, little, can I do that? But what happens is when God puts us in a place where it's only him, then, then the glorification is only him. And when we're in love with him, it's not really about our glorification. It's about him. So it's just powerful to me to, to see this. It's powerful to me so, to go through this. And so verse 1, it says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you. So we have this opportunity to shift. What does this word preach, uh, I'm sorry, which mean? What does it mean? It means also demonstrative this. In other words, we walk with this is the way to walk in it. This is what God can do. This is the authority. And then all of a sudden the word of God becomes excited because the spirit of God uh, has taken over our lives, right? And lives within us. And all of a sudden when we're born again, the word of God is exciting. We can't get enough of it. We spend time in it. We love it. We memorize it if we can. All those things. This is just amazing. You said, but John, the word of God doesn't say what I'm going through. But though it might not say specifically, hey, don't eat that. But what it does say is uh, how to live for Christ. And then that rules what we do. Our mind, emotions, and will. So it's so powerful with innocent verses 1 and 2 with the word which, which means. I, I think about Matthew 1, 22, excuse me, 21 through 23. Think about what he was, think about what the, the angel was saying to Joseph. He was ready to, to divorce Jesus' mother, right? You all know, you read Matthew chapter 1. You've read it, especially at Christmas time. He's ready to say, peace out, I'm out. Verse 21. But this angel appears and says to him, she, meaning his wife, 
will bear a son, and you shall call his name what? Jesus. Even the name of God matters. There was, if you understand scripture and you understand the time, there was a lot of, there was other people named Jesus, Yeshua, right? But they didn't do it. In the sense of life in the Holy Spirit. You should call him name Jesus, for he will save his people from their what? How good is that? All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has speak or spoke by the prophets. Verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name what? Emmanuel. Which means, there's the word which, which means God what? When God changes us, God is with us through the Holy Spirit. Everything changes. Your mind, your emotions, and your will, everything changes. So today, I want to ask you, will you ask God to change all that? Because your mind, emotions, and will turn out in your expression in your, in your flesh, right? Am I right? The flesh doesn't have a, cone, a, a, a speaking cone to talk or a speaking code to talk. But the mind, emotions, and will can embrace that. But we go back there in verse 1. Now I, I speak to you. This is so good. Now I speak. And now I make known to you brethren the gospel which I preach to you which also you received one and also you stand two and which also you are saved three and uh, if you hold fast for the word which I preach to you unless you believe in vain. People believe in vain because they hear the word of God. There's like, oh, there's a God, but their life has never changed because they are not born again. Now we don't, I don't judge somebody's, are they saved or not? That's up to God. But if someone says they're born again, we can see it by their fruit. Because where there's no fruit, there's no root. You want to play over me, brother? And I say all that to say in verse 1. Which, this is in verse 1, which you also received and which you also stand. That's all I want to say. And which you also received and which you also stand. I just want to leave that to you. That word receive literally means this idea to receive from. I want to ask you. What have you been received from? It literally means receive. That it means from uh, uh, close alongside. Is Christ close alongside? Is he? God has created everybody, created everybody in this room for a purpose. You say, but John, you know, you know, I'm not a pastor, like I said earlier. You know, if you go back and you read, which I already preached on this before. But I just want you to know this. The highlight, according to scripture, of what I am is what I'm doing right now. But the people that look around and they're not seen as super important from the outside, read 1 Corinthians 12. Read verses. Read 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Read towards the end of 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Which I also received. It literally means that I close alongside. And when you receive Jesus, he was close alongside. And he it also means shoulder strong. Is Christ showing strong in 
I just want to leave it up. It's, it's, it really, I believe that Jesus is close alongside me, that he's strong. Because who's fighting the battle for me? Me? You? Oh, yes, we bear one another's burdens. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that like the old hymn would say, with victory in Jesus, my Savior forever, the balmy and salty with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all, all I could do is punch me to victory. I'm going to ask you straight. Which to you, for which also you received, that word is powerful in the Greek. By whom God shows him strong. What do I need to do? By showing strong, personal condition. God does call us to things sometimes, let's be honest. I'll just say me. God calls me to things sometimes I'm like, I don't want to do. I don't know if that's out for you. But then the Holy Spirit takes over. And so my flesh begins to, my mind, emotions, will change because my love for Christ changes all that. That's my prayer for us today. Which also you received, in which also you stand. Literally stand means I Only God, I make to place, to step up, to establish, a point, balance, or balance with. That's literally what it means. So I'm asking you today, just even in verse 1, is it verse 10 in your life? By the grace of God, I am what I am, or is it what I want it to be, and I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it academically. I'm going to make it emotionally. I'll, I'll make it in the weight room. I'll make it with speed. I'll make it uh, who I marry. I'll make it with uh, whatever else I'm going to do. And then when I have enough money and I have enough time, I, I'm going to retire. Y'all know it. Y'all y'all have seen it your, your whole life. Is that really what your life is going to be? And then you retire. What then? Well, I get to love my children. I get to, you know, volunteer time. I get to do all those things. Is that the goal? No, John, I'm younger, and so I'm going to make a lot of money. That's that's really the goal. I can give. I can give. I can give. Is it about you giving, or is it about the one who's already gave? That's what I want to ask. Are you willing to receive? Stand what Christ has given you. You see, God's given me a vision for this. Uh, and I want to say, you know, He is. He, God is God of the future, but He's also God of the present. Will He be that for us? So, for those that are in this room or online that don't know Jesus Christ, you know what it means to be born again. The born again is not what you think. Even the demons believe in shudder. It's, it's an absolute change. It's not going to be the correct words that we try to say scripture. It's going to be a transformation of your heart. Uh, everything comes to life under Christ. You realize you're sin and sinful and can't change anything. And Jesus is the only one. I mean, everything changes. That is salvation. And you're willing to follow Christ. Oh, there's times I'm not willing. But it, God changes when I'm not willing. Because he's not just my savior. He's my Lord. Is he that for you? Is he? Oh, I was raised in church. I know I was saved at 18. 
and I wasn't even in the church building. Uh, I was actually radically changed when I was in a prison. Right outside of a state or a place in Virginia Beach. And we radically change. We, we, we open our, we, we trust Jesus. We, we begin to put our faith in him. And all of a sudden, our heart is changed. We begin to love him. And then he becomes more value over everything else. Is that you? I'm not saying you don't sin and I don't sin. But in us, we recognize those sins. Maybe it's a day late. Maybe it's a two days late. I don't know. But we recognize that we can't stay in that place. And then when we're saved, when we're given, and we surrendered our life to Christ, then all of a sudden, then we want to change. We give up Jesus. That's why you're here. That's why you're alive. Uh, it's because you want Christ. And the Spirit of God is just moving. And when you change, then we come to you. Now it comes about Christ reaching others. When we pray, are we praying for ourselves good? Are we praying for our families good? Are we praying for people at our jobs or in our dorm good? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Because Christ moving in you through the Holy Spirit. This is not just somebody up here saying words. It's not. It's not. you face, no matter what you go through, no matter what your challenge is, will you lift up Jesus? Will you? Who are you praying for? Who are you asking God to radically say? Who are you discipling? Well, how's God changing your life? We only have one life to live. here right now, Lord, they need to come forward and pray. Come on. Who in here needs to walk with Jesus? Maybe there's something in their life they need to, to speak to you about. Maybe there's somebody they've been trying to share you, Father, with and, and, and just need empowerment. Who, Lord? What do we need? What do we need that the Spirit is showing us right now? Maybe it's to pray for others around us. Maybe it's to pray for our family. Around us, whatever it is we need, God, we want to pray. We want it to be an expression of who you are and what you're about. I pray for my sisters and brothers in this room and online. I pray that this encounter with Christ changes everything. Because we do walk by faith. Does anybody in here need strength of faith? Well, then we pray. Then we pray. We come forward and kneel right now. Just really express our hearts to you. That's our prayer. If there's anybody in here that doesn't know Jesus, my prayer is this. That they would know the only person that can pay the price for our sins because they are sinners. And that person is Jesus. So may they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. May they believe in their heart. That God raised him from the dead. 
May they put their faith in Jesus and ask for forgiveness of their sins. And God, you change them. You fool them. And they come to you right now. They don't, there's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do to earn the hope of Jesus. But everything we can do by accepting Jesus. That's our prayer. God, may you grace you. Bless us today with your grace. And so it won't be how we're going. It'll be how we're going again. That's our prayer.